Australia. If they can do it to refugees on Manus Island, yeah. they'll do it to you. If they can do it to Aboriginal Australians in remote communities, they can do it to you. If they can do it to the young and the unemployed, they can do it to you. If they can do it to senior Australians, they can do it to you. If they can do it to people with disabilities, they can do it to you. If they can do it to working families, they can do it to you. If they can do it to students, and they will do it to students, they will do it to you. There is one fight that involves many people. It is the people of Australia versus the Abbott government. <laughs> They can't even hide the photos that get taken of them smoking cigars. <laughs> they can't hide about their little pre-budget dance party. And they certainly can't hide their glasses of champagne after the most vicious budget this country has ever seen. They can't hide the lies and they can't hide the ideas that inform the lies. And for that reason, I'd like to introduce my colleague, writer and author, Annie Lowenstein, who's going to tell us some truths about those ideas. Welcome into the stage, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you today about something that hasn't been said, and that is the fact that we have a corporatised government, not just this government, the last government, the government before that, and the government before that. This is not. This did not start in September 2013. The budget last week was a disgrace, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's not forget the issues that the Liberal government has brought in started in many ways long before the last election. They started because the Labor Party and many of its supporters in the press were happy to accept those policies. What we have now is a matter of nuance and extremism, and I'll get to that in a minute. Privatisation, outsourcing was done by Labor and the Liberal Party for years on a range of issues. Immigration, Indigenous affairs, transport, education, health, childcare, defence. This did not start last week. It did not start in September last year. And Abbott and Hockey and their cigar-smoking friends in the Murdoch press, and hello if they're here, hello boys and girls. They did this because Labor, in my view and many people's view, laid the ground. They believe in the very similar values. This is not simply if the Labor Party came in tomorrow, the problems are solved. Do not forget what happened on a lot of these issues in the last six years. Immigration as one key example. Manus Island and Nauru was not opened by the Liberal Party. It was reopened by Labor. Let's not forget that. So what I would say to you all is do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by the sweet sounds of Bill Shorten who spoke last week about his dedication to the working people. Really. He's dedicated to the working people while in the same week taking money from corporates to speak about his love for the working people. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Labor Party of 2014. And we should, in my view, oppose it. One of the ideologies of our age that I've written a lot about over the last years is vulture capitalism. The idea that anything is for sale, anything has a price. And let's not forget that during last week's budget coverage, many of you, I'm sure, listened to the ABC, how many journalists at ABC were happy to repeat the lie that there was a so-called budget emergency? It wasn't said as fact, it was simply said and posed to critics or the Labor Party. There is no budget emergency. Let's say that again. There is no budget emergency. And we can chant that if we like. There is no budget emergency. Thank you. <laughs> One of the things that this government, and dare I say the last government, talk about is the wonderful examples from the US and the UK. We should follow their leads. 
Now, anyone who spent any time looking at the reality in the US and the UK in terms of equality and inequality will find that's exactly the opposite of what we want. We have privatised education, privatised healthcare, privatised hospitals. And let's look at Western Australia briefly. Western Australia is now having arguably the greatest examples of privatisation in this country. Hospitals fully are being privatised by Serco, a British multinational. That, ladies and gentlemen, is our future. Shame indeed, unless we oppose it. And latest figures from the UK, which were released last week, found that the top 1%, our favourite 1%, own as much as 55% of the population put together. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not a future that we want. Unfortunately, and I say this as a journalist myself, many in the press are not helping the situation. In fact, they see their role as furthering the problem. Let's look at, briefly, the idea of a show like Insiders on Sunday morning. What do you think that show actually is about? It's about the idea of journalists who never actually go anywhere talking to other journalists about how wonderful journalism is and commenting about the press. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem with our press, who report for all of us, whether it's the Murdoch Press, ABC or Fairfax, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem. So a revolution we need isn't just in politics, it's also in the press. say a few brief things about immigration detention because we've heard a lot about the disgrace of what's been happening in the last years over this issue and I couldn't agree more. But let's not forget, again, this didn't start in September last year. In the last years, Howard government, Labor government, now the Abbott government again, have outsourced and privatised all immigration attention to various companies, Transfield, G4S, Soco and others. This is a bipartisan belief. The human rights abuses we're seeing in these countries and the budget last week talked about, let's face it, giving more money to offshore detention is a problem we have to tackle which is not coming just from the Liberal Party. This is bipartisan. And that's why the idea somehow of accepting and hoping that's going to change requires action. Some of you will be aware that this year the Biennale, the wonderful arts event that occurs, there was a massive campaign by artists who are opposed to the fact that the Biennale, that the Biennale was happy to take money from Transfield, a corporation that was supporting, funding and receiving money, our tax money, on Manus and Nauru. A $1.2 billion contract went to Transfield this year to run both those centres. And the Biennale was forced out of public pressure and otherwise to rescind that money. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an example of people power, and we should celebrate it. So what we should all do when we go home is we should check where our money is invested. We should find out if our super funds, our banks and others, is it being invested in companies like Transfield and others? And if it is, move your money. We have a democratic right to ask and demand that. And the fact is, a lot of super funds are becoming quite aware of this now, and they're getting a little bit savvier about at least revealing where their money goes. Let me conclude with this. What is required here is a movement of justice, equality and fairness. And that will not come, in my view, and many other people's view, from a Labour, a Liberal Party that is happy to talk about justice, and both sides do, despite what we might think, but do not deliver it. And with that, I thank you. Thank you.